So what does it really take to become president? And I think that's something that we'll look at in this particular piece. Again, thanks to Mr. McAloon for putting this together. Um, let's just kind of treat this like um, it's a game, you know, and you're asking questions on, you know, truly what does it take to be president, some of the questions surrounding being president. So, first of all, let's look at the formal qualifications. So, let me move that up. There we go. So, first of all, are you 35 years of age? Now, I know most of you, of course, are, are not. Maybe a couple of you are still working high school at 35. Hopefully not. Uh, but are you 35? If you remember, remember the House is 25, the Senate is 30, and the presidency is 35. So you want to think in terms of why would they have such differing age um, requirements? And mostly because we want experience. And you go, well, 35 isn't very experienced. True. However, think in terms of when the founders wrote uh, the Constitution, 35, was clearly middle-aged since most people only lived to be 50 or so. So it was a little bit past. Were you born in the United States? You know, um, if Arnold Schwarzenegger, for example, former governor of California, famed uh, Terminator uh, movies, he could never become president because he was born in Austria. Um, but that's a key question. Are you or were you born in the United States? Have you ever lived... Or have you lived in the United States for the past 14 years? And you go, well, that's kind of weird. Why would they include that? Well, ultimately why that's included is because the founders wanted to make sure that when they wrote um, the Constitution in, in the 1780s, that the 14 years before would mean you're looking at 1774 approximately, 1773. So they did not want any of the former colonists who moved back to Britain during the war be able to come back and become president. So they were just kind of covering themselves. Um, but those are three formal qualifications. All three of these are in Article 2. So you must satisfy those. Now there's also some informal qualifications. Sorry again, uh, my screen's a little off here. Uh, here's some informal qualifications and these are not written, but let's just kind of keep them in mind. So are you good looking? In the age of television, we're looking at, you know, we don't necessarily want unattractive people to be talking or speaking into our living rooms. Um, and that's not saying the presidents we have are really good looking. But the point is, is that we don't want them to be, you know, Quasimodo for that, for that, um, as an example. Um, are you well educated? Statistically, we've had more presidents from Hale, or Hale, Yale and Harvard than any other, any other, um, universities. So, you know, we expect our leaders to be highly educated. Are you wealthy? And and what we really want to say is, are you extremely wealthy? Because it takes a ton of money. The last presidential election in 2012 cost over a billion dollars. A billion. Now, how much did the individual candidates spend? Mm, that could be debated. Uh, however, you have to have some wealth initially to be able to uh, draw more wealth to you. Mitt Romney, for example, uh, extremely wealthy. Now you'll think, well, Barack Obama, he wasn't that wealthy. And yeah, there's been a lot of examples of people who came from fairly modest means, uh, like President Obama. Um, and that's significant. So there is still hope that really anybody can run. But the reality is, you have to have some wealth. Are you white? Statistically speaking, all presidents up until Barack Obama were white. So if you're a white male, you got a very good chance. Uh, if you were to look at the Republican candidates now, are there something like 16 or something that are out uh, for 2016? And 15 of the 16 
are white males. Well, sorry, fit, uh, 14 of the 16 are white males. One is white female, one is a black male. So, um, you know, certainly this is changing. Certainly it's becoming more representative of our society, but still it's kind of a white guy's game. Uh, how do you feel about changing your mind every few months? You know, being president means you have to be willing to make hard decisions that may or may not go against your, you know, basic belief system. Uh, sometimes a president has to be a pragmatist, which means he has to do whatever he's, whatever he's willing. Let me change that. A pragmatist is somebody who's willing to do whatever it takes to get something done. Can you give a good speech? We need good speakers. You cannot be a poor speaker and become president. Now, we have certainly seen some examples even in the most recent past. However, um, you know, what made Ronald Reagan really good, what made Clinton really good, and what has made Obama really good is the fact that they are very good speakers. Uh, and then lastly, you know, are you okay with saying one thing and possibly doing another? Are you okay trying to convince one group that this is what you're going to do and in reality you're you're really looking to do something completely different? So let's go ahead and move on here. If you satisfy all of these qualifications, then really what you're doing is you're setting yourself up to become president. Here's George Bush Sr. here. So what might your responsibilities, and we'll, we'll talk more about this, so I'm just going to quickly go through these. You know, you, ha you are the leader of the largest government in the world. In fact, I might say that the Chinese government it might be a little bit larger, but our government is pretty immense. It's the largest employer in our country. Um, you're the commander in chief of the largest and most powerful military in the world. And not only in the current day, but in the history of the world, no military has ever been larger. You're the face of the nation across the globe. So whenever anything ever goes wrong, people always come to the president that say, President, what do you think? And that's important to keep in mind. You're also the face of the nation at home so that when people uh, look to you after disasters or bad things, you're the one who steps up and you're the one who makes, you know, the comment that's needed to be said. And we'll, again, talk about these roles here uh, in like a half a lesson. Um, and you have to be willing to lead our nation legislatively. Now, understand this. The Constitution says that Congress may only um, create or write laws, but the president gets to kind of persuade Congress which way to go. Uh, we see that with President Barack Obama and his ability to get uh, affordable care passed. How about job security? Can you keep your job? Is it pretty pretty simple to do that? And the answer to that is, yes, it is. Um, there's a couple, now there's four up here, but there's one in particular that we really got to make sure we touch upon. And that is, if after four years you are you run for re-election and you're defeated, automatically you're out. But, so what I like to do here is, first of all, if you're if you commit a high crime, and this is in the Constitution, if you commit a high crime or a misdemeanor, you can be kicked out uh, of office by Congress, and that's called impeachment. Remember, Congress, the House brings the charges. Uh, the Senate tries um, the alleged, and so that's important to keep in mind. If you become too ill to perform your duties, you can be voted as disabled by a majority of your cabinet, um, which also includes your vice president. So that's a way you can be removed. And in fact, uh, Woodrow Wilson in 1918, 1919 suffered a stroke and literally, and I say, say that, uh, literally his wife ran the country. His wife, who was a nurse, kept him in his bedroom as he was recovering and she would limit who had access to him. And often they would pre bring materials for him to look at. She would take them, take them into the room without the individual who brought it um, and go over the material with him and then she would report back. It was thought that she actually made many of the decisions. Uh, you can die in office. Uh, we've had quite a few presidents die in office. Uh, we're currently in our 44th president and eight of the 44 have died in office. That's a lot. 
Um, and so we'll look at the 25th Amendment here a little bit later, but the 25th Amendment basically says if a president becomes too disabled, then he can be voted out. Um, yeah, we already talked about this. Your term in office is 40, four years, uh, but you can get reelected once. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit more. Electoral College, we'll talk about here towards the end of this lesson. Uh, but understand that we have a very indirect way that we elect our president. And we'll talk about some of those reasons why. Um, how do I get the job? Well, of course, you got to get nominated by your party. Again, we're a two-party system. So what that means is you either have to be a Republican or a Democrat to really have the support needed to be able to become president. Right now, like I said, 16 Republicans have... have um, said that they are going to run for president. That's a lot. Uh, I believe there's three Democrats right now. So um, ultimately they go through a primary process. Uh, they try to get enough votes through this primary process where they will get chosen at the national convention and then they will be the candidate for the particular party. You also win the electoral college. And again, we'll get back to this uh, in a couple minutes. Um, and then on January 20th, you take over. Um, so that's what it takes to become president.